Hello, good evening. On a day when most of the attention was focused on the so-called meaningful games at Pataudry, Parkhead and Broomfield, who would have believed that Hibs and St Mirren would have produced seven goals at Easter Road? Hibs 4-3 victory increased their total number of league goals by 25%, and it was the first time Alex Miller's side had scored more than one goal in a league match since March last year, 32 games ago. Well, at Pataudry, Rangers were going all out for the victory, which would almost certainly have killed off Aberdeen's championship challenge. In the much-delayed tenant Scottish Cup tie at Capelo, Morton were determined to win themselves a trip to Fir Park by beating Meadowbank Thistle. And at Lansdowne Road, England were looking to grind their way to their first Triple Crown in 11 years. While in Paris, the Welsh were little more than cannon fodder for a rampant French 15. And Davy Proven is with me tonight with his thoughts on that big match at Pataudry. A Rangers victory would take the defending champions all of ten points clear at the top of the table with just nine games remaining. So the incentive for Aberdeen could not have been greater. The Dons could perhaps take hope from the fact that Rangers' record in the North East is poor. In fact, they hadn't scored on their last three visits. The commentator is Jock Brown. There's the side chosen by Alex Smith and Jockey Scott for this make-or-break match. Stuart McKimmy isn't fit to be considered, and Ian Jess is still slightly troubled by a knee injury. Scott Booth's recent excellent performances keep him in the side, with Peter van de Ven joined on the bench by Willem van der Ark. It's another vital game for goalkeeper Theo Snelders, who missed 11 matches after fracturing his cheekbone in an accidental clash with Ali McCoist when the teams last met here at Pataudry in October. Graham Sinners has abandoned the three strikers policy he employed in midweek at Perth, so Ali McCoy drops down to a place in the bench where he's joined by Peter Hoistra, leaving Mark Haitley and Mo Johnston as twin strikers. Snelder's opposite number, Chris Woods, is playing his 71st consecutive match for Rangers. He lost his first goal in 1991 on Tuesday in the 1-1 draw with St Johnston at McDermott Park. And the referee... Fittingly for this match, one of our top officials, David Syme from Rutherglen, who sets off for Kiev on Monday to handle the Dinamo Kiev Barcelona European match on Wednesday. A very tense atmosphere inside the stadium. A gusting wind blowing down the field into Rangers' faces. And Aberdeen setting off on their most important task, perhaps, of the season so far. Victory only is acceptable if Aberdeen are to retain any genuine hopes of competing in the league race. There's Jim Betts stepping away from Johnston. Played forward by Stevens for Johnston. Gately's head flick. Robert Connor is dropped back for Aberdeen. Connor playing wide on the left side of the Aberdeen midfield. Head up. Fouled by Wright on Walters, going in with his upraised right foot. The Rangers have reverted to their familiar central defensive partnership of Richard Goff and John Brown with Scott Nisbet at the left back, marking Paul Mason. It's Nisbet's free kick, helped on by Haitley. Connor looking for Booth. That's good play by the youngster. Gary Stevens now for Rangers. Stepping away from Hillhouse. Good pass from Stephen. Takes the return from Harlock. That's intended for Haitley. Stephen Wright playing the ball to safety, taking no chances at all with Mark Walters hovering behind him. First corner kick of the match for Rangers. Walters to the far post. Headed out by right. There's Harlock. That was a chance, all right. Well, Terry Harlock will be regretting, I reckon, not hitting the target with that shot. Difficult one to take in the volley. It was a header out from Stephen Wright, which went straight to Harlock. And the chance to drive this through this crowded goal mouth but it goes well over the top that was Steven sending it back the offside flag was up I can't think why it was Steven playing it back 
referee has not yet spotted the near side linesman Paul Watson. The linesman still standing up with his flag. He now has brought it down, but he certainly put his flag up as Trevor Stephen played the ball back to his goalkeeper. The referee Simon clearly was conscious of that. Robertson forward. It's a fine turn by Booth. Yes, Hillhouse in the middle with Brian Grant. The chance for Aberdeen. Booth going all the way himself. And the ball bobbled just as Booth went to strike it. A young striker out of luck, starting only his sixth first team match. He scored four times this season, and I was thinking only about number five here. You see the ball popping up for him just as he went to shoot. Well controlled by Walters. Aberdeen getting plenty of players behind the ball with a loose possession, but they do want to keep three men up front whenever possible. That's quite clear from the opening spell in the match. Racing inside the dummy from Hillhouse. There's Grant. Stevens with a pass. The tackle came from Beck on Hollock. The Aberdeen fans enjoyed that. No complaint from Hollock. Tackle came from Hillhouse. Aberdeen are certainly looking eager in these early stages. They clearly have a warm to the task. They realise how important this is. Klisch opting for the long ball in the end. It's hanging up in the swirling wind. Haitley's header, here's Stephen. Good running that by Haitley, he's away from McLeish. Irvin goes across, that's for Johnston. Well, it was the attentions there of Stephen Wright which made that so difficult for Johnston. An excellent move from Rangers. But the young fullback played a key role in making sure that this didn't find the net. Look at the challenge he made. Johnston got to the ball first, but he had no time at all to find the way to net. Hillhouse has found some space. Supported well by Grant. This is Mason. A good build-up from Aberdeen. Back again with Wright. He has Bet available in the middle. David Robertson on the left. That's for Connor. Just kept in play. Hillhouse the layoff. The little dummy there from Hans Hillhouse almost opened up the space for Paul Mason. An excellent move, this, from Aberdeen. Robertson playing it forward there for Connor. And when he pulled it across, Hillhouse runs over the top of the ball. It came off John Brown, and that's what saved the day for Rangers. In the middle it goes. Brown getting there with a challenge from both. The supporting player was Mason. Here's Hillhouse taking on Gary Stevens. Fine goalkeeping by Woods. Hillhouse not happy with his cross in the end, but... Another excellent sweeping move from Aberdeen. They really are stretching the Rangers' defence. Hillhouse had lots of confidence to take on Gary Stevens, looking for support inside. Played that much too close to Woods. Brown playing it inside. Here's Brian Grant. He's blocked by Steven. Betts can try again. Across to David Robertson. And the ball looped across, headed away by Brown. Walters robbed by Mason. Good piece of judgment there by Mason. Wright was caught late by Walters. And if he allows play to continue with Aberdeen in possession, he allows to Mason. The golden opportunity there for Scott Booth, although the flag was up. Well, I think Scott Booth may well be relieved about that. At this level of football, that was an excellent chance. Tackle there from Walters on right. The referee allowed Aberdeen to continue. And this was a magnificent pass into the gap for Mason. And Booth was a judged offside. The Rangers have pushed Mark Walters for the four on the left flank to make a three man attack. They've matched Grant, Bett, and Connor with Spackman, Harlock, and Stephen. The chance now for Johnston. It couldn't have been closer. His first glimpse of goal in the match, and it could so easily have been the opener. 
Well, what an incredible break that was from Rangers. This long kick out from Chris Woods caused all the problems. Hately underneath that, got the slightest of touches. Johnston was there, tried to loft it beyond Snelder and hit the upright, going past for the goal kick. Peter Hoistra and Danny McCoist getting some treatment there from the Aberdeen supporters as they warm up. There's Harlock and Hately. Connor steps in. Bet being wrestled there by Harlock. It's all becoming very intense in that crucial midfield area. And the referee, David Simon, will have words with the former Millwall midfield player. The message is quite clear, calm things down. Well, Jim Bett has been through this many times before in his long, illustrious career. David Syme, the kind of referee required in a match as torrid as this. There's a bit forward, Walters won't get there ahead of Irvin. Stevens looking for Gary Stevens, breaking on the right, followed back by Scott Booth. Good play by Gary Stevens. A chance now for Rangers. And Hately was in, she's away. Well, that was all set up by Gary Stevens. The closest, perhaps, of the first half for Mark Hately. Great control on the chest, getting away from Scott Booth. Playing it right across at the angle, and Hately came in a fraction late. Back from Gary Stevens. Either side will want to give anything away. And he's closing seconds of the first half. So back from Goff to Woods. They will seek out Mark Hately with what could be the last attack of the first half. Well, it's there isn't even enough time for that. It's been an incredibly tense, tough first half. Aberdeen having a lot of possession and the territorial advantage. But Brian Brandt there and Terry Harlock were terriers in the middle of the field. The best chances, though, fell to Rangers. And Mo Johnston came closest when he moved on to a Mark Hately head flick to loft the ball beyond Stenders and off the upright for the goal kick. So at half-time at Pitodri, it's Aberdeen nil, Rangers nil. The first two league games between these clubs this season ended in draws. Nil-nil and the water-ridden pitch in October here at Petaudry. And 2-2 just before Christmas at Ibrooks when Jim Betts scored a couple of goals in the last ten minutes to rescue the men from Petaudry. So that reflects how closely matched these teams are. It was 1-0 in the Skull Cup semi-final in favour of Rangers. And this match turning out to be every bit as close. Rangers certainly taking the brunt of the Aberdeen attacking play in the early stages, but they began to settle as that first half wore on and carved out one or two good chances before the interval. Took Rangers some time to get their passing movements going and have men like Trevor Stephen and Gary Stevens involved as they are now. Here's Trevor Stephen. Given no space at all by David Robertson. Well, he's been fouled there by Robertson. Confident, skillful play that by Stephen. And it sets up a very dangerous free kick. Scott Nisbet and Richard Goff going forward. Goff hovering at the edge of the penalty area to make a late run, perhaps. Nisbet is right in the thick of it. That's a good effort there by Hately. He's looking for a corner kick. It did appear to be a deflection, but the goal kick has been given. It was a great dummy, that, by Morris Johnston. Played in low this time by Stephen. Johnston dummied the ball. The shot came from Hately, tipping over the crossbar. Here's Mason, and he has earned a throw for Aberdeen. Have to take it, though, from the right place. That's why he leaves it there to the right. It's a great ball in from Booth to Hillhouse. Gary Stevens was there for Rangers waiting in the middle. 
What a superb piece of build-up play straight to the training ground involving Hillhouse and Booth. It opened up the Rangers' defence. So the corner kick, giving the opportunity for Brian Irvin and Alec McLeish to go forward. Helped on by Nisbet, there's Booth. And it's Morris Johnston back helping in defence. The ricochet off Booth gives the goal kick to Rangers. Well, Johnston in unusual circumstances, deep inside his own six-yard box. Hately chesting it down, there's Harlock. Barry Stevens. Johnston with his head to that, there's McLeish. Good header by Bett. Corner to Booth. Holding up the play well. Well, his team has tried to find golf, but this is Scott Booth. Bett helps it on. Here's Grant, hustled by Walters. Well, the space is being denied. All these creative players in the middle of the field. Mark Walters, too, finding it difficult to get any change out of Stephen Wright over on the Rangers left. Hately gets up well. This is Johnston. Running at McLeish. Good tackle by McLeish. Well, there's always a suspicion that Ali McLeish is half a yard slow, but he offsets that with his vast experience. So Trevor Stephen with the corner. Goff at the edge of the penalty area, making the run now. Up goes Goff. Fine effort by the Rangers captain. Well, disappointment all over his face, but he got up superbly to this corner. And Stelders was clearly relieved. But just look at the leap here in that crowded penalty box. And Snelders saw that dipping over the body. He may well have had it covered. Stephen Wright lofting it forward, finding under the head of Gary Stevens. Hately's head out of Walters is offside. Well, a clinical enough finish, but Walters knew the whistle had gone. Good header again, though, by Hately. That layoff from the high ball, very skillful indeed. Hillhouse battling there with Goff. Both to Connor. Trying a very ambitious cross in that position for Robert Connor. It didn't come off, and Rangers have the goal kick. Hately getting up well once again. Goff striding forward. He hasn't been given the chance to do this too often in the match. That's for Johnston. Here's Trevor Stephen. The early ball played across, Walters coming in, Wright was there for Aberdeen. Here's McLeish to clear. Here Gary Stevens. Couldn't get that beyond Irvin. Wright losing out to Nisbet, here's Walters. Connor was back in the box, there's Gary Stevens. Now Trevor Stephen. Well, a good clean strike of the ball, but Snell does cut down the angle and made that look easy. Applause from the Rangers fans at the beach end. Oh, a concentrated attacking move this from Rangers. Connor doing well initially. That was Gary Stevens. Johnston left that to Stephen. Irvin getting up well at the edge of the box against Hately. Stolen away from Spackman by Mason. Here's Grant. He'll be taken out of that by Harlock. But if he's given the free kick. Well, Terry Harlock taking lots of abuse from the Aberdeen supporters this afternoon. Not going to worry him, though. So Brian Grant was willing to take him on physically in the middle of the field. He has won the free kick. This is Connor in space. Both and Hillhouse to the middle. Oh, 
Obviously snorting her away from Johnston. There's no offside. Stevens put under pressure there by Connor. Reacting very calmly indeed, the Rangers fullback. Stevens crossed there's Hately. Well, that's one he'll feel he should have hit the target with. He was brilliantly picked out by Trevor Steven. Made space, there didn't appear to be any here. Send over a very accurate cross. Hately getting up so well, he couldn't keep the header down. Good play from Trevor Steven. Bet and right, work the ball clear. Spikeman was there, there's Mason, here's Hillhouse, now Brian Irvin. Hillhouse is still there, here's Irvin once more. The referee having to keep a very close eye on things there as Bet tries to control the ball and he's guilty of handball. Well, an amazing melee there right inside the penalty box as Aberdeen tried to winkle the ball into a shooting position. Well, they headed away there, came from both. There was Mason playing it in. Hillhouse was holding it up. Irvin right in the midst of it. Look at all these Rangers players surrounding the two Abaddonians. In the end, when it came out, it came off the right arm of Bet. So the second Aberdeen substitution being made. Paul Mason goes off and Willem van der Aert comes on for his first outing of the season after so much injury trouble and he will present a new unorthodox problem for the Rangers' defence. Spikeman lofting it forward rather hopefully, and Stephen Wright. Booth helps it on. Brown's clearance. There's hoist up. Supporters already chanting that they are the champions. Clearly believing that a draw here will be good enough to ensure the end of the Aberdeen challenge. There's Boris Johnston! Couldn't quite get up high enough for that. So disappointed. Sheer frustration there, but what a fine cross it was from Hoistra. In comes Morris Johnston trying to direct that past Snelders. Peter Hoistra certainly has made an excellent impact on the proceedings of Rangers since his arrival as substitute. There's Van der Ven. Interception was made by Stevens. Steven. Harlock. Spikeman tried to find Hoistra but succeeded only in reaching Jim Bett. Good change of pace there by Bett. Good angle made on the right by both. That's for Hillhouse. Fine, flashing header there by Hillhouse. So effective in the air, the Dutchman. But what superb service it was, first from Bat, and then the cross from Scott Booth on the right. A lot of power in that header from Hillhouse. Once again, Rangers have the throw. Just two minutes left, plus injury time, there hasn't been a great deal of that a brief stoppage, should a call for Scott Booth throw from Nisbet helped on by Haitley Johnston to Trevor Stephen going for the spectacular volley Connor drops back to take the pass from McLeish Bet on the far side. A very clumsy challenge by Hoistra again. He has been putting himself about since he came on. There's Irvin. Wasn't quite what it was intended. David Robertson plays it in. There's Hillhouse! Aberdeen on the head! Sheer joy for the Aberdeen supporters with just one minute left. Turn out to Aberdeen's advantage in accidental fashion. Well, Hans Hillhouse gets a vital ball there. Brian Irvin and a free kick there against his legs. He then won it brilliantly at the edge of the box. Cleared across from David Robertson. That was an excellent cross 
proved so crucial for Aberdeen. A free kick taken quickly, which was not intended for Irvin, struck him on the legs, he then charged forward, went through two tackles, played it wide for David Robertson, and this was deadly finishing. Well, the atmosphere inside Petorti has been transformed by that goal from Hill House. The Rangers supporters were celebrating the championship, and now it's the Aberdeen fans who realise that they are back in the league race with a realistic chance. There's Stephen Wright. Rangers now trying to find the courage to come back, but they have no chance now. That goal coming so late, there was no way back for Rangers. And that 15 match unbeaten run comes to an end thanks to the goal from Hans Hillhouse. Well, he's scored 11 times now this season for Aberdeen. He's had his critics in recent weeks, but what a vital goal that could turn out to be. The championship has been blown open again as Aberdeen get the victory, which was so crucial to their hopes. A grandstand finish then from Aberdeen for Rangers. Disappointment in the end. It's Aberdeen 1, Rangers 0. Well, like, the weather came very late indeed. Do you think the chance had gone? Yeah, it looked as if it was going to be a no-scoring draw. Yeah, I must be honest and say that. Uh, but uh, in saying that, the game always looked as if somebody could steal it. It was always going to be uh, a one goal in it, I thought. And uh, Rangers had had a couple of chances in there earlier on, and uh, we'd had a couple of chances. And I always hoped that we would manage to put one away. And uh, we got the wee break at the finish and it was a, a great cross into the box for David Robertson and an equally good finish for Heelhouse. Were you pleased overall with the approach of your players from the start of the game? I was really pleased with their commitment to the game and, and their effort. I mean, when you consider we've only played one game in a month, uh, it, it's tremendous credit to the players to maintain that fitness and be able to go out and play against uh, a very fit and strong team like Rangers and match them fitness-wise. You had two teenagers playing your team this afternoon, Stephen Wright and Scott Booth. Is it fair at this stage uh, to predict a big future for these men? Oh, I, would, uh, I see a big future for these two. They're two very level-headed uh, boys as well, but they've got great ability and both of them are very quick. And they've got a great temperament for the game as well. I mean, that was a massive game for Aberdeen Football Club today, and both of them handled it really well. And they'll handle the after-match stuff as well, so I'm very pleased they can play. You've been saying all along the league race wasn't over. Are you more than ever convinced now? Well, what the game's, the result's done today, Jock, has opened the door for us and it allow us to, it gives an opportunity now to get the, get the gap close to four points. And if we can get it to four points, that means we've got to beat Motherwell on Tuesday, then uh, anything can happen for there. Well, it was uh, not pretty to watch, Davey, but uh, I think it's a result that will be greeted by everyone outside Ibrooks with, with some pleasure because it does keep the league race open, doesn't it? Yeah, I think Alex Smith uh, hit it on the, the, the nail there. Uh, Dougie, he said that uh, the door is now wide open. And if Aberdeen won at uh, Motherwell on Tuesday night, they're only four points behind. And both clubs still have difficult matches to play. That's, that's right. Now, Alec, I think, pointed out the fact that it was all about effort and commitment in the middle of the park, particularly. And, well, there were many examples. But we can pick up one or two, I think, which uh, it really wasn't a game for faint hearts, was it? No, that's, that's a, a fair enough tackle by Jim Bear, but Terry Hurlock just gets up and gets on with it. And obviously, Rangers would be trying to close Jim Bear down, and likewise, Alex Smith would be telling his midfield lads to get in about Trevor Stephen. But I don't really think there was uh, a malicious tackle in the game. A any of the real hard tackles we see here, um, the, the ball is being played all the time. Um, and I think that the game was played in a good spirit from what we we've seen in film. Is Matt this, uh, this is young Stephen Wright that uh, we talked about, and he times that very well indeed. And Mark Walters is, uh, is not an easy winger to mark, is he? Yeah, it's a good block because Mark's good at that. He just uh, draws the ball to his left foot and whips across, and the uh, young lad did well here, yeah. Now, the major controversy obviously hinges in the goal, Dave. Now, afterwards, Graham Sooner said the referee had a good game other than the last minute. He felt that Bobby Connor had taken the free kick while the ball was moving. Now, I think we can prove that that's not the case. The ball was dead, but more importantly, it's where the kick was taken from that's important. Well, I don't think we actually see it too well from this angle. This is just quite simply the, the goal, which Hans Hill House takes very well, obviously, doesn't it? I think uh, the, the free kick certainly wasn't taken from, from where the offence was committed, do you? Um, both managers will see the incident differently. 
Now there, there's, let's just watch where Hooster catches Bet. Now Bet is on the deck, Hooster stops the ball, now the ball is dead, so yeah. Graham Souness's point is not valid, but the kick is taken from there and that obviously is wrong, isn't yeah. it? Both managers will see it differently, Dougie. Graham Souness will tell you that uh, Aberdeen uh, gained an advantage by, by taking the, the kick from where they did. Alex Smith will tell you that um, it was good interpretation by the referee who was trying to let the game flow. It really yeah. depends what camp you're in. Now, if you're watching the left of the picture, Jim Bet is still on the ground, so that's where the offence took place. There is where the kick was taken. So, as you say, it depends what side you're on as to whether you think that's, that's, that's fair or not. Sure. Do you think that uh, Aberdeen can still win the championship? Well, of course they can win it. Rangers obviously are still short odds uh, to, to mm. win the championship. They can still only lose it. But I think, uh, importantly, and particularly if Aberdeen won on Tuesday night, they, they will sow little seeds of doubt in the Rangers' lads' minds. Uh, and that all counts, you know, the Rangers lads uh, were strolling towards the championship, now it's a lot tighter. That's a different story now. Well, you and I, as it happens, we're both at uh, Celtic Park today. Celtic beat St Johnson 3-0 and their scorers in that Parkhead victory were Tommy Coyne, his uh, 13th goal of the, the season, uh, Paul Elliott and Joe Miller, although the latter two both finished the game limping badly and were sent for precautionary x-rays. It was also a very welcome 51st birthday present for manager Billy McNeil. Dundee United took the points against Dunfermline thanks to young Duncan Ferguson's first league goal, while St Mirren saw a 3-1 lead disappear in that remarkable game at Easter Road. Paul Wright put Hibbs in front with a penalty, and then goals by Kinnaird, Martin and Torfesson seem to have the game wrapped up for Saints. But Paul Wright's second, won by Gordon Hunter, and substitute Gareth Evans' last-minute goal gave Hibbs an astonishing victory. Jim Griffin put Motherwell in front in a bad-tempered encounter at Fir Park, watched by a lower-than-expected attendance of just over 5,000 fans. But Wayne Foster scored on the stroke of half-time from a position Motherwell claimed vehemently was offside, and John Robertson and Jimmy Sanderson gave Hearts the 3-1 win. So Rangers' lead is now cut to six points, with Aberdeen's visit to Fir Park on Tuesday giving them the opportunity to reduce it to four. Celtic are just two points behind St Johnston with a game in hand, with Hearts one further behind. In Division 1,